Welcome back, shooters. I'm Thomas. And I'm Berkeley. And today we're gonna to be discussing underwater off-camera lighting and remote shooting for wide angle photography with the Backscatter Hybrid Flash. So Berkeley, why don't you start us off here? What is off-camera lighting and what makes it special with the Hybrid Flash? Well, there's a couple different ways you can do off-camera off lighting. You can do it with a strobe or you could do it with video lights. And we'll talk about some of that today. Um, but the, the main um, feature of off-camera lighting is you as the photographer get to stay back with your subject in a good scene and then have a, a light source out into the scene. And today we're going to be talking about wide angle, which is a whole nother beast other than macro, what you guys have been talking about. And so we can add multiple light sources and get a lot more depth to our images. It's really fun. Yeah, for sure. And the hybrid flash itself too, it's not just a slave strobe, right? You know, and that's one of the biggest misconceptions. So, um, you know, we have um, hundreds of thousands of people who we work with all the time. And um, our, our most expert photographers, they say, oh yeah, a slave. Yeah, I understand that. And we have to say, no, no, it's more than a slave. It's actually a remote control. So unlike a normal slave where I would have one cam, or I'm sorry, one strobe on camera, triggering a remote slave, um, this strobe can actually, I can turn this red dial and press a button and send over a series of flashes that changes the power level of this remote strobe. So whoever's by the remote strobe, maybe it's a model, maybe it's no one, um, doesn't matter. It, I have the control as the photographer to make this remote strobe brighter or darker which is pretty rare in underwater lighting. Right, yeah, no swimming over, no explaining to someone who's never held that thing before how to use it, it's pretty awesome. Right, especially when you've taken all this time to get everything set up just right, and all you need is that remote light to be a, a stop brighter or a stop darker. Right, yeah, super convenient. Yeah. So why not just use a video light when it comes to off-camera lighting for these wide angle scenes? That's a really great question. And most of our professional clients that do a lot of like deep wreck diving um, will use a video light. So they'll set up lights remote and which is pretty nice because you have a constant light. Um, the, the hybrid flash actually has 5,000 lumens. So you can use it in a video light mode as well. But the, the big difference here is you have hundreds of times the output with a with a flash tube than you do with just LED video lights. So um, if you're diving a, a very deep wreck, you can get away with with uh, lights. Like take a look at an example yeah. here. Um, so in this scene, this was in truck and lighting up some zero planes in a hangar. And the model has two 10,000 lumen video lights on their rig. And I'm having to shoot ISO 4000 <laughs> to get the shot. So I'm actually at F5, 1 40th of a second, ISO 4000, just to get enough light on the scene. In this next shot, you'll see that I've got more ambient light. Now I've got two divers shooting video lights to help light up these two tanks at, you know, say 130, 140 feet. So I'm at 1 80th of a second ISO 800, but kind of the bummer is the lights still aren't bright enough to really light up the scene and give me contrast. So where strobes come in is what you really see in this next shot. So now I'm at 10 meters, I'm at 30 feet of water, but this wreck looks like it could be at 200 feet. And so you can see my settings, I'm at F9, one two hundredth of a second and ISO 200. So I've, I've got way low noise, but the, the coolest thing is now I've got so much more color because I'm shooting um, in shallower water and I've, I'm able to get close to the subject. I've got my primary light lighting up the sponges on the front of the guns, but now my, my subject in the background can output a hundred times the amount of light that a video light would so um, lets me really shoot a darker background, which one of the benefits of that is I can hide all the other bubble blowers on this wreck. So kind of a, a cool benefit, 
Like if you look really closely at this shot, you'll see there's some streams of bubbles in the background. But since I'm shooting dark, um, they're, they kind of just vanish into the darkness. So the, the real key is um, when you use a strobe rather than a video light, you can have a much higher contrast scene and you can shoot this type of shot in much shallower water. Yeah, you don't have to use those extreme settings that really invite a lot of ambient light in and everything. Exactly. And with that too, that means you can shoot sunballs, right? Yeah, probably the coolest factor is um, now you can aim up. And, you know, so traditionally when you're doing rec photography with video lights down, you know, in, in the deep, it's all about a downward angle so that you can get as much light as possible, you know, to the camera. But now, um, like for example, this next shot, um, I'm shooting F16 at 1 1 60th ISO 200. So kind of a typical sunball type shot, shooting straight up into the sun, but my model um, can still get some light onto the scene by having the strobe output so much brighter than a video light. So it's, it's, it adds to a whole nother um, option for wide angle underwater remote lighting. Yeah, exactly. You've got so much more you can do with it than a video light. Right. So can you tell us more about um, how you set up for these scenes and also like the distances that you're working with? Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually really simple. Um, so re regardless if you have a model or if you have, you know, maybe just a strobe on a tripod, the remote strobe you set to the REM position. So that would be remote. Then your on-camera strobe, um, typically I shoot manual and that's the best way to do this type of work. So my on-camera uh, strobe would be set to manual to trigger the remote strobe set to REM. And then um, the next step is I work with, um, you know, a model or I, I physically aim the light pipe to be pointed at my trigger strobe. So I'm framing up the scene and I take my trigger strobe and I put it off. Maybe it's lighting some of the scene in front of me, or maybe it's just way out as far as I can get to just put some light out towards that remote strobe. And the, the real trick is the model doesn't have to worry about, you know, which dial to turn or anything. You can just have that preset. All they have to do is, is kind of worry about the angle of the strobe such that the light pipe is pointed at me, the photographer, and that the angle of it is perpendicular to me. I would say the most difficult part is getting that down. Usually after one or two dives, you get that figured out really easily. The cool thing is um, like, for example, this scene, um, I'm about 30 feet, you know, 10 meters away from the model and I can still trigger that light all the way back there. You, sometimes you can go a little further, but for the most part in, in clear visibility, that's about its max range, about 10 meters. Um, if I wanted to work closer, I could put an IR filter on the front of my trigger strobe and not light the scene in front of me. Um, but in that case, can only trigger the remote strobe about a meter away. Typically, I like these big scenes and I'll have um, no IR filter, have one strobe working just mostly as the trigger and hitting, hitting that light pipe on my remote strobe. So that really opens up once again, just so many more possibilities of what we can do. Just a short conversation with your buddy and you're pretty much good to go. Right. Awesome. Yeah, it's really great. And the cool thing is you can even daisy chain, you know, these kind of shots. So like in this next setup, um, there's a, a couple different exposures. I have one strobe that I'm pointing at the model who's down the, the passage in the wreck and she has a strobe kind of pointing behind her, but then I have another strobe behind her on a little tripod that is then lighting up the, the passage as well. And so the cool thing in this um, little sequence here, you can see how I update the power. So, you know, I take a shot and I'm like, mm, maybe that's not bright enough. I turn the power dial on my trigger strobe and I hit the 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 uh, mode button. It sends out that that signal to the remote and the remote says, boink, yes, I got it. 
And now I, as a photographer, I know that it's been reset. I can take a shot and then evaluate it from there. And so I can continue to fine tune what that remote strobe output is without having to make a bunch of crazy hand signals to the model or swim over, which then could just silt out the entire wreck or reef or wherever you're at. Um, and so it just makes it a lot more easier to just beam over that new power level. For sure, yeah, just super easy. And then the sky's the limit when it comes to creative applications with it too. Right, yeah. So do you have any pro tips for any kind of new wide angle remote shooters out there? Yeah, I do. I, I would say number one is, is plan ahead on how you would like to mount the strobe. So will you use like a muck stick? So if you're in an area that a muck stick would work best, that's hands down the easiest. Um, also like the Joby tripods uh, or any kind of, you know, cheap little tripod you could use and mount your remote um, or have a model. And, and that's really the most fun. And you can shoot so many more scenes. Like a lot of the images that um, we just shared now um, most of those were shot on one dive and that was because I had a model so we can change scenes really quick. So if you, if you, if your time's limited, a model is a great way to go. But the real trick is you gotta, um, really work with your model. Number one, you gotta be patient. You gotta be nice and really talk it out in a, in, you know, ahead of, of the dive. Um, cause you know, crazy underwater signals aren't are just going to get you some bad hand signals back yeah. so so really talk talk it through have a plan make some practice don't think the first dive is going to be a home run um so i'd say that's tip number one um tip number two i would say when you have a remote strobe um if the the strobe is pointing slightly towards the camera um then i would not run a diffuser and that kind of keeps the, the, the beams kind of narrow and doesn't kind of blow out your shot. So, you know, when it's coming back at you with the camera, you know, it, it, it looks more like a flashlight. If, if you're having um, like you're backlighting a scene or you have the model maybe aiming the strobe backwards, that's when like a flat diffuser or a dome diffuser works really well to help spread out that light on a, on a larger scene. So. Um, maybe if you're working with a model, have a hand signal that you get, you know, in advance of where th whether you want the, the diffuser on or off. The other thing is um, don't be afraid to daisy chain a bunch of strobes. So, um, you know, most of the, the shots that we uh, just sh shared now, we're all shot at the digital shootout where we kind of had limited time. Um, but, you know, we could have put eight strobes out and you know, really plan for that. And so if, if you have the opportunity and maybe you've got some friends that all have similar strobes, you could all team up, put some strobes out and really light up a huge scene and have these strobes daisy chain off each other and do something that no one's seen before. So yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, it's super awesome. All right, well, thanks Burke for coming by and telling us everything we need to know about shooting the hybrid flash in remote mode for wide angle scenes. My pleasure. Awesome. Also, check out our remote shooting video for Macro with Backscatter CEO Jim Decker for more pro tips on using remote mode. Remember, your purchases from Backscatter or any of our authorized dealers worldwide help us keep making more of these videos. We have free lifetime tech support on every purchase, we ship every day, and we dive, shoot, and service everything that we sell. This is Thomas from Backscatter. And this is Berkeley from Backscatter. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.